Hello all, welcome back. I decided I wanted to make a quick video. Um, the other day I was making some Python scripts. So what I did was I set up a uh, development server actually with um, Parallels. But um, before I show you how I did that one, I decided I wanted to show you first on the Windows machine and basically the idea is that you can use VirtualBox um, and I'm on the Mac with the M1 right so let's say <clears throat> you want to do some x86 development or you just want to have a Python uh, server for developing Python I'm just going to show you how I set up this server uh, basically um, if I just start this one headless just so I could show you really quick so basically <clears throat> once this machine uh, boots up um, it's gonna start headless and then I can just use SSH to connect into this machine right so let's see here it might take a minute to start um, and this is a Windows PC with uh, x86 CPU architecture. Um, I just gave the server um, uh, two gigabytes of RAM and two processors running Ubuntu 2204. So once the boot process finishes here, you're going to get your login. So basically, if I wanted to um, connect, I could just use SSH and then log in right with my username and password and then that's it so let's say I could just minimize this and I could I could use this here and and do what I have to do right or if um, you know I don't want to use this uh, Microsoft remote desktop at all I could just start the VM here and then I can just use my terminal on my Mac the same way Right, so I can just log into the same machine here, you know, and then I could just make a directory called um, Python, right? Um, CD into Python, and I can just, you know, I can run the Python interpreter here, or I can make a script or whatever I want, right? So um, Python's installed by default so you know you could just uh, do your work all right okay and I won't get into the script writing at this moment so first I'm just going to um, shut down this machine here from my Mac and then um, we'll go through the install process really quick Okay, so it says it's going to shut down in a minute, which is fine. So what we can do now is just jump back into the virtual box here. And um, what I'm going to do is just create a new machine here. So I'm just going to say new. And I'm just going to call this one uh, Ubuntu um, x86 uh, demo because I'm going to delete this one after anyway, right? I'm just going to show you how I set it up real quick. So the last time I gave it uh, 2 gigs of RAM, so 2048 megabytes. Um, so I'm just going to create the hard disk now. Um, I just gave it like 20 something, right? And then it, it kind of went through really quick there. So I'm just going to go back in here and uh, configure some additional settings right so in the system I'm gonna give it two CPUs um, display I'm gonna leave storage here I'm gonna set this one to solid state and then this one here I'm gonna set it as a live CD DVD and then I'm gonna select my Ubuntu live server um, so you just go to your downloads here and it's right here okay uh, the network 
I just wanted to talk about this for a moment because I've had somebody in the comments before ask me about the network. So in uh, VirtualBox in the settings, I'll show you after over here. But um, if you set to if you want to use it from your your Mac or another computer or device on your local network, you have to set it to bridged. Okay. If you set it to um, NAT network, this one here, it's only going to work on your virtual network. So it's only going to work with virtual machines in VirtualBox between those machines, okay, and your host. It's not going to work outside of your host network, okay. So I'm going to select bridge here because I want to be able to connect with, uh, you know, with my terminal from my Mac, okay. And the rest I just left at default. So that's it. Then uh, I'm just going to hit start here. So you can see this one's powered off now. So I'm going to start this one up and I'm going to go through the install process. Okay. It should only take a few minutes. Um, I just went through it actually really quick. So I'm just going to click this box here and select try or install. I believe it goes right to the install anyway. So we'll just wait for it to, uh, to boot up here and then hopefully you can see the screen. Um, I don't really have a way to make it any larger at the moment. Uh, so basically it's going to boot and then um, once it boots, uh, then we can go through the install process. So not to worry. Uh, it should only take a few minutes anyway. So uh, what this is good for is if, let's say, you're doing, you know, pen testing or you're doing some um, exploit development or you, you want to work with a particular uh, set of Python tools or whatever and you don't want to install everything on your main machine, um, you can use this uh, VirtualBox machine here to SSH into the machine and then do all your scripting and testing and everything there. So I'm just going to select English here. And then um, I'm going to stick with the default Ubuntu server. Uh, you can go with uh, the minimized, but um, you may have to install a lot of extra stuff. So I'm just going to leave it with the default for now. And then it's going to, for me, it's going to, since I set it to bridge, you can see here it's going to give me a IP address uh, in my range that uh, I can connect from my Mac uh, as it's connected to the same network. Okay. So then I'm just going to go with the default here. And uh, so it's just saying it's, uh, so I'm going to say done. Uh, it's going to ask you um, if you want to set up uh, encryption, et cetera. Uh, you can do that if you want for this uh, video. I'm not going to do that. And then. It just gives you a brief overview of what it's going to do with the disk. So I'm just going to hit done, and then navigate to continue. And I'm just going to pick a username. And then the server name, I'm just going to uh, name it uh, what I named it before. So I'm just going to say demo. And then I'm going to pick a username and then enter a password that I'm going to remember. Okay. Then I'm going to hit done. I'm going to select this install open SSH server. So that will enable me to connect via SSH from my local network or remote if you have a VPN server of your own. Okay. Um, I'm going to skip through all of this stuff here because I don't want any of it. And I'm going to hit done. It's more or less going to be finished installing in just a moment. It's going to update and then reboot, right? So talking about a, um, you know, remote server with a VPN or whatever. So let's say, uh, you know, maybe you're traveling and, uh, you know, you just want to work on some Python scripts while you're away and you just want to take your iPad, for example. Um, you know, you could set up your own uh, open VPN server, connect back to home, and 
start up this machine here or leave it running uh, while you're gone and then just connect via SSH directly to this machine right here and code on your iPad um, you know or if you just want to play around with some Python modules or something um, you can use this server for that so the great thing about it is if you're um, you know if you're new to uh, programming or development it's a great way to sort of set up a machine uh, take a snapshot once it's set up and then you know break it right you know if you uh, you write some scripts or you mess something up it's not a big deal you can either revert the snapshots or you can uh, you know just create the machine all over again and if you want to share your files you can always set up a little um, local server or something to share you could set up a local file share or you can actually um, you know get yourself a, a login key from github and just push to a private repository and then you can um, once you finish your scripting you can pull that back down onto your main development machine I mean options are kind of limitless right but I think it's a good overall thing to have in your home lab or in your working environment um, you know so I just thought it was a good idea to go through this little setup process here and um, and and this is basically how I do it when I set up a machine obviously this particular machine has no desktop environment so when you start uh, writing your Python scripts there's not going to be any um, virtual uh, IDE or anything like that. There's not gonna. There's no desktop environment, so everything would be done in Vim. Or you could install, you know, uh, a Visual Studio Code um, instance on here and run VS Code in the browser if you want. Is another option. But um, sometimes it's just cool to write some scripts in in Vim, right? I don't know. Maybe I'm just old-fashioned. Um, so that's it. Um, it's done the install process here. So I'm just going to reboot now. And you want to come down here and um, eject this uh, disk. Um, it's going to say I uh, remove the installation medium and then press enter. So I did it a little bit too quickly. So then go ahead and hit enter. It's going to reboot now. And then that's it. So more or less, the next time you start this machine up, you can start it headless. And then um, I think it was uh, 88 for this one. So once it boots up here, you can see that um, basically I can just connect to it on the uh, Windows machine or I can use my, my Mac mini here and connect that way. So once the boot process is finished, I'll just connect to this machine and um, there we go. So. It's going to generate some files here and things like that so I'm just going to open up the uh, command prompt here PowerShell and I'm going to say SSH I think it was um, 88 right yeah so I'm just going to enter my password here right and that's it I'm into my demo machine here now and then if I want I could you know just um, work with Python here or whatever I want to do right okay so I'm just gonna exit from here actually actually while I'm here I might as well uh, uh, oops. might as well shut it down so I think uh, that's it for this video and um, so close this so that's off now so since this one here I just actually installed this one a few minutes ago I'm just gonna actually take a snapshot of this one here um, right here so I'm just gonna say I'm gonna select take and I'm just gonna call this one here um, base image right so Basically, 
if you know I go do something uh, I, I go do something I mess something up whatever I can always come back to this base image I can take another one before I do something etc I can clone it right um, so I'm gonna go back to the details page and then for this one here I'm gonna I'm actually gonna remove it um, because I don't need it so that's it hope you guys liked it see you in the next one